This video is sponsored by my online kitchen design solution. More about that at the end of the video. Today I'm answering common kitchen design questions that I've seen show up in my comment section. What would you say is the bare minimum distance between a wall and the side of an island? If you can fit through it. That's the bare minimum. Now according to the guidelines, it's a little bit different. Really you should have about 36 inches of space between a flat wall and the side of an island. Understanding that this is just a pass through or a walk through, that there's no opening doors or appliances in the way. And generally this would be for a one person kitchen. Now that changes of course if there are appliances and doors and more cooks in the kitchen circulating around that space. You may need 42, 48, 60 inches. The bare minimum would be what works for you in your kitchen and what's functional for you. You just have to consider how you're using the kitchen and not get too hung up on all the guidelines as being strict values that you have to follow. But if you stick with 36 inches, that seems to be the most comfortable and what most people agree on as being the norm. What are your thoughts on putting an oven in an island and a cooktop elsewhere? Uh, I mean, I guess go for it. If you're gonna split the range into a cooktop and an oven, my personal preference is that you would just have a wall oven because that's the most accessible way to use an oven where it's just at that right height where you can put things and pull things out without having to bend over. I think if you're transitioning from a one appliance range to a cooktop, and a wall oven, then to have that wall oven or that oven in a base cabinet, whether it's in an island or not, might be defeating the purpose of having a wall oven. But I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. If you wanna put an oven in your island, go for it. I think that's a great use of the space. And as far as splitting up the appliances, it's the same thing as if you had a wall oven and a cooktop elsewhere in your kitchen. So that part to me is not a really big issue because we do that all the time anyway. It's a matter of if we wanna put an oven in a base cabinet and whether it's in an island or not, doesn't really matter, it can be wherever as long as it's functional and accessible and you like where it's at and you don't mind bending over to get in the oven, well then go for it. What should our budget expectations be? How much money do you have? That's really the answer to that question. How much money do you wanna spend on your kitchen? You can take that information and use that to craft a kitchen that will fit that budget and getting all the things that you need in that kitchen. To set an expectation of your budget, you're going to be disappointed because you probably have an idea of what you want your kitchen to be and what you want in it. That idea is probably not connected to a real price figure. Like they're probably really out of whack. And so that being said, that if you have this idea, and you wanna to try to squeeze that into a budget, it's just not gonna work that well. We can do the same space for a little or a lot, depending on how much money we have to spend. And so it can get really tricky. I did a video on budget, you should check it out. I'll link to it in the description below. It kind of goes into a little more detail about how we should process and how we should handle the budget question when we're looking at designing a kitchen. When redoing a kitchen, do you put the flooring in before or after you put the cabinets in? I'm a little scared to answer. I think you should lay your flooring first, but build up the space underneath your cabinets to the correct thickness of what your flooring is. For instance, in my house, we put in three quarter inch hardwood flooring. It goes underneath my island and my island is on top of that and that's fine. Then when it gets to where the cabinets are going to be laid, where the appliances are, the dishwasher, fridge, and the range, we have three quarter plywood going throughout. It's easy to lay the flooring, butt it to the plywood. The cabinets sit on top, they're the right level. If you don't do it this way, you have to build up your appliances and your cabinets anyway, and it makes for more hassle when you're installing. I think this is the best approach if you're laying flooring, especially with cabinets that have gables or sides that go right to the bottom and aren't on legs. When you're dealing with cabinets with legs, where you can just adjust those legs to a different height. It's probably a much easier experience for you. And so in that case, I would say you would probably need to just lay flooring underneath your appliances, especially the dishwasher, so that everything is the same level. Then underneath the rest of the cabinets, you're just adjusting the legs to height anyways. So there's a little bit of a different approach depending on the type of cabinet that you have. Now underneath my island, I laid the floor right through and the island sits on top of that. And in the event that that ever has to change, we can move the island, redo the floor, and I have no problem putting the island back on top. If you're right-handed, should you put the dishwasher on the right hand side. There's no rule that I know of and if there is it probably shouldn't be a rule. Sometimes the dishwasher can't go on the right side of the sink. 
In my kitchen, it's on the left. There's not enough room on the right. I really don't think it matters a whole lot. I don't think it's any more functional to have it on one side or the other. They could be in a different section of the kitchen. They could be in an island across from the sink. So there's lots of different placements for dishwashers. I think the best placement is next to a sink so that you're not dragging dishes across flooring and stuff dripping everywhere. I just say pick one and go with it. Either one is good. Hi, what do you think about putting mirrors in a kitchen to make it look bigger? Well, hi, and I'm not an interior designer. I'm assuming as backsplash tile is what you're talking about. That would be a little bit much for me. But tell me if I'm wrong. If mirrors are the thing to do right now, then definitely let me know if you're an interior designer out there watching this and you're like, no, no, you gotta put mirrors as backsplash. I'm all ears, I'd love to know what the opinion is. My personal opinion is I just don't like it. Does it make it look bigger? Yeah, I guess so. It does create that illusion that there's a bigger space. And so if you're trying to make it look bigger, then probably that's one of the ways you could do it. I think if you're going to put backsplash tile as mirror, that you go with the biggest tiles of mirror that you can find. How do you feel about moving your kitchen all against one wall? There's no one who says that you have to obey the laws of having a kitchen triangle. If you wanna have a linear kitchen, that's fine. The kitchen triangle is proven to be just a little more functional in terms of moving from appliance to appliance to sink, from appliance to appliance to sink. So that being said, there's no hard, fast rule. There's no reason why you can't have a kitchen on one wall. It probably works best if it's a one cook kitchen and you don't have two people trying to get by each other trying to get to an appliance. That's not the reality for a lot of people and you can still have a one wall kitchen. I think it can look really nice with a big island in front of it so that at least there's counter space that you can you know, maneuver to to use. There's lots of one wall kitchens out there. I mean, the benefit of a one wall kitchen is you don't have corner cabinets. And I think that's great because corner cabinets. Ugh. How about design for people in wheelchairs? This is a really great question. A lot of kitchen designers don't have tons of experience in designing accessible kitchens. Not to say that we can't or don't know how, it's just not the normal thing we do in the run of our day. Of all the kitchens I've designed over my 20 years, small portion of that would have been wheelchair accessible kitchens. However, there are guidelines in the NKBA handbook that kind of lay out what you should do if you're designing for a wheelchair. For every NKBA guideline for a kitchen, there's also an accessibility standard that goes along with it. Different suggestions for almost everything in the kitchen, and it would be really important that you go through those guidelines, go through those accessibility standards to understand how to make that kitchen the most accessible for someone in a wheelchair. I'm interested in what you think of adding a hot water spigot when I'm changing out my countertops and sinks. Thanks. You're welcome. Instant hot water, there's nothing wrong with that. I've never had a need for instant hot water yet in my life. I'm okay with boiling it on the stove right now, but I imagine there are a ton of great uses for it. Hi, my kitchen is dark purple with white. Is that okay? You do you. You like it? If you like it, it's okay. One of my biggest answers to clients when they would come into the shop and ask me, what do you think about, I'm like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. What do you think about it? Because you have to live there and I'm not gonna live there and likely will never visit you. So if you like it, that's the main thing. And if you want purple and white, then you should do purple and white. It might not be the best thing for resale. So if you're planning on selling your home, you might wanna rethink the idea of having a dark purple and white kitchen because that's probably not what most consumers are looking for. If you're not selling your home and you're gonna live in it, then definitely go for it. How do you do a corner without a cabinet? And can you show us your corner in your kitchen? It's not a secret, I'm not a fan of the corner cabinet, whether or not you have room for it or you don't. I just personally don't like them. It's generally the most inaccessible space in a kitchen. And by using the most accessible space on either side of that corner and making those things functional, that's a better approach for me. If you're starving for space in your kitchen, put in a corner cabinet. If you're afraid to lose that space, put in a corner cabinet. I'm not against putting in a corner cabinet. I put them in a lot of kitchens. And yes, I will show you my corner in my kitchen. Come on me. All right, here is my corner system. I have two fillers creating a 90 degree angle and they're out 24 inches from each wall. And then I put these two cabinets that operate separately. So my corner is nothing in there. This cabinet is the pullout where we use all our spices and that's only what that cabinet's used for. This cabinet is just a regular old cabinet. No corner base there at all, no blind corner. And you know, we just keep the cheese grater in there. Some kind of mixer thing and electric kettle. 
There's no pullouts in this cabinet. I probably will put one in eventually, but we just never got around to it. I've never missed the space that's in behind. It's never been an issue for me. So that's how I do corner cabinets without a corner base. What is this online kitchen design solution you're talking about? All right, that's not one of the questions that were in the comments, but it is what today's video is brought to you by my online kitchen design solution. Check out the link in the description below for all the details, but it's pretty basic. You send me some pictures and measurements of your kitchen. We get to work on designing your new layout, whether it's a renovation or a new build, or you're just curious on what your kitchen would look like if it was all redone. This might be a solution for you, so check it out if you're interested. Link in the description below to get started. I know there's a lot of questions out there about kitchen design and what should be done in different circumstances. I'd love to hear what your questions are. I'd love to be able to answer them and do more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy my content. I really appreciate you. Bye.